Hello, tonight we'll be talking about the photoelectric effect. This is a thing that scientists knew was occurring. They didn't really understand why until Einstein explained it. Let's talk a little bit about Einstein first. First of all, I expand on Planck's ideas. Planck thought that there were quantum or quanta of energy in light. He thought that instead of it being a continuous stream of light, which it looked like, that there's really millions and millions and millions of little packets of light, kind of like how we see something that looks like just a piece of matter. But in reality, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of little atoms there. Very similar ideas. But it was kind of weird at the time, that idea that Planck came up with. And uh, Einstein expanded on those ideas and helped prove Planck's ideas. He said electromagnetic radiation has properties of both wave and particle. So not only does it have those wave properties that we saw with frequency and wavelength and the speed of light, but they also can act like particles if they interact with things that are really small. And then he defined the proton, the photon, sorry. And he can, what he was calling a photon is a little particle of radiation. In reality, there is no mass to it, but a little bit of radiation that has no mass, but it's carrying a quantum of energy. So what's happening right now, if you are anywhere where there's light, there are millions and millions and millions of little photons hitting you. If you can see something right now, there are these photons bouncing off other objects around you, and whatever photons are reflected to your eyes is what you can see. So if someone's wearing a red shirt, it's the red photons that are getting reflected back to your eyes. All the other photons are being absorbed. All right, so what was this photoelectric effect? Something that they knew was happening, but didn't totally understand it until Einstein explained it. So electrons were emitted from a material, a metal, when light would shine on it. So that was what would occur. So they have a metal like potassium, magnesium, cesium, anything, and certain types of light would cause electrons be emitted and be kicked off the surface of the metal and they could detect those. But they didn't totally understand why. So Einstein said, well, that light must have a certain frequency. And remember, when we talk about electromagnetic radiation, that means it must have a certain energy in order to kick those electrons off the surface of metal. And they must be absorbed in whole numbers of photons. So um, it's a one photon versus one electron battle on the surface of these metals. And they have to be a one electron versus one photon with a minimum amount of energy to make it happen. If it doesn't have that amount of energy, the electron doesn't get kicked off. So here's an example. We have a big chunk of potassium and red light is shining on it. Remember, red is on the lower energy part of Roy G. Bupa. So there's not enough energy when when this red light is shining on it, there's not enough energy to kick these electrons off the surface of the metal. So there's electrons here, there's not enough energy to get them off of there. Here there's intense red light. It doesn't matter because it's still one-on-one -on -one battle. It doesn't matter how many photons of red light you shoot at it, it's not going to kick those electrons off. So red light just is not a high enough energy to get the electrons kicked off the surface of the metal. So the reason why I say kicked off is because it's acting like a particle now, kind of like a pool ball that hits another pool ball. The energy, if it's high enough, can kick that electron off the surface. Photons can't kick us around because we're so massive compared to electrons. But electrons are really, 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 really small in mass, so they can be moved by these photons. And that's why light is considered a wave and a particle, because it acts like a particle and it moves really small objects. So neither the red light nor the intense light have enough energy to be absorbed by the potassium and kick out electrons. The energy can be absorbed, but the electrons cannot get removed from the surface. All right, so what if we have violet light, which is on the other end of the spectrum? Well, if we have violet light, and we just have one photon, well, one electron would get kicked off because it has enough energy to do so. And this is still a one-on-one -on -one battle. Oftentimes, light is shown at these squiggly lines. 
What about a three or intense violet or more photons? Well, since it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, it would just mean that more electrons would be kicked off the surface of that metal. Draw that a little better. So if there's three light waves or three photons, three electrons get kicked off. It's a one-on-one -on -one battle. I often have kids ask me, well, what if it's higher energy than it's really needed, like UV instead, which is even higher in energy? That would just cause these electrons to have a faster speed when they are removed from the metal. So, review, the violet light has enough energy to be absorbed, resulting in potassium emitting electrons. That intense light allows for more electrons to be emitted because there's more photons hitting it. So I'll show you this animation, which helps explain a little bit how those electrons could be emitted. What will happen is the electrons will leave this metal surface and go down this wire, and it, all electricity is is electrons running through a wire. So the more electrons, the more voltage is formed here. So this is one way that would be detected that electrons are being emitted. When light strikes a metal surface, electrons may be ejected. This process is called the photoelectric effect. Each metal has a characteristic energy level. If the incoming light is below this level, no electrons will be ejected. For example, this red light is not sufficiently energetic to eject electrons from cesium metal. Yellow light is also not energetic enough to eject electrons. Green light is energetic enough to eject electrons and current flows. All right. So, an example I like to use to try to talk about this is what if an eagle flew in the window and tried to pick you up? Well, an eagle is not that strong. Uh, could not pick up a human being, at least not a teenage human being, maybe a really, really small human being, but not one of you. And it could not pick you up and throw you out of the classroom or out of your room. Um, what if 20 eagles? flew in the window and try to pick you up. Well, it doesn't matter in the case of this analogy because it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, photon versus electron. So this analogy is kind of like the photons being the eagles and the electrons being you. If there's not enough energy in each eagle to pick you up, it's not going to matter. It won't be able to pick you up. Well, what if a monster pterodactyl came and flew in the window and tried to pick you up? And this is a huge, huge bird that could pick up a human being. Well, if there is only one, it could come into a classroom and pick up one person and kick them out, and that would be it. If there's any extra energy, it would be absorbed by the classroom or by the metal. If there was 20, you guessed it, 20 students would get kicked out of the classroom because it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. So it's kind of a weird analogy, but it can work. It can help people understand what's really going on. The real gist of the photoelectric effect is it helps us with a few things. First of all, understand that light does have different amounts of energy with different types of photons. Also, that light can act as a wave and a particle. And this was the big key experiment to see that light acts like a particle because it could move a piece of matter like an electron. So those are the big things about the photoelectric effect. And it helped prove Quant, or Planck's ideas about quantum theory, about the amount of energy in each of these little packets. And that amount of energy is called a quantum of energy. That's all.